Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. This is the discussion about the central angles and the inscribed angles of a circle and the resultant arcs and the relationships that result in the angles and the arcs. In any circle, you can go 360 degrees around as you rotate through. It's always 360 degrees. So when we talk about the arcs of a circle, it depends on how far around you go. So if I have an arc that results from going a quarter of the way around the circle and I'm only looking at that part of the circle, I notice that that would result in a 90 degree angle. This angle inside where the vertex is the center of the circle is called an central angle. Now the arc measure of that is 90 degrees. Notice it would be the same as the angle that created it in the middle. If I have an arc that goes from John here Cobell, to here, its central John angle, Cobell. say, is 120 degrees, the arc measure is also 120 degrees. So for measuring the arc degrees, it totally depends on what kind of central angle caused it. So let's look at some more examples. If I have a central angle of 20 degrees, the arc that is formed is also 20 degrees. If I have a central angle that is 180 degrees, then obviously I'm going halfway around the circle and that arc is 180 degrees. In that case, it's called a semicircle. Semicircles are also um, halfway around the circle, resulting from a central angle of 180. Now, let's take a central angle of 40 degrees, resulting in this arc that is also 40 degrees. Let's say that we're going to take the center point and actually move it back to the other part of the circle. What happens there is now we have an angle that still creates the same 40 degree arc. But the measure of that angle is actually 20 degrees. And this is called an inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is always half the measure of the arc that it creates. So the central angle is 40 degrees, resulting in a 40 degree arc. The inscribed angle is 20 degrees, which is half of it. Let's look at another example. In this example, the central angle is 70 degrees, which results in the arc of that circle also being 70 degrees. The central angle and the measure of the arc are always the same. However, if I take another point on the circle and I connect the intersected points, this is an inscribed angle. And if the arc is 70, then the inscribed angle is actually 35 degrees. Now the interesting thing is that it doesn't really matter where I put my angle as long as it results in the same arc. So this would also be a 35 degree angle. And this would also be a 35 degree angle. The inscribed angle is always half the measure of the arc. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.